Hello everyone and welcome to my channel and in this video I'm going to be reading the letter that was sent by Anna Nowak to Chris Watts while he was in the Weld County Jail. This appears to be the first letter that she sent him and on the envelope it's the return address is Life Church Anna Nowak. Um, if you in De Pere, Wisconsin. If you look that up, she's not listed as one of the um, staff members of the church, so maybe she just used the church address as a return address because she didn't want to put her home address on her initial letter to Chris. So let's see. I haven't read through this yet. I'm going to be reading this for the first time with you. Chris, my name is Anna. And first, I want you to know that this is not a hate letter. I'm not writing this to condemn you or anything like that. I actually wanted to write for the exact opposite reason and let you know that no matter what the world says and no matter what you hear from other people, there is a God who loves you unconditionally and without judgment. I've been following your case and it's been heavy on my heart to tell you that no matter what, happens or what has happened, God has already forgiven and forgotten your sins. It's hard to accept that for me sometimes. Well, how does she know he's forgotten and forgiven the sins if Chris has even asked for forgiveness? How does she know that if Chris has asked for forgiveness? It's hard to accept this for me sometimes to know that when I do something wrong and sin, I don't have to worry about him hanging it over my head and remind me what I did wrong. Instead, he welcomes me with open arms and loves me when I'm, I can't read this, and loves me, I'm at a, despite what I did wrong. I obviously don't know your story, oh, but she knows that he's forgiven. But God never changes, and his love and forgiveness is the same for everyone. You simply have to ask God for forgiveness. Okay, there she goes. She's telling him now. You have to ask God for forgiveness and then accept it. And really, it's really that easy. I'm not sure your background or if you believe that Jesus died for your sins. So see, she, she might need to find these kind of things out prior to saying, yeah, you're forgiven. Or if you believe that Jesus died for your sins, but I want you to know that he did and he would do it again and again because he loves you that much. John fifteen thirteen says, greater love has no one than this, that someone lay down his life for his friends. That's an odd passage to send him. Shanann and her girls had to lay down their life. I also want you to know that if you're feeling like your life is over because you're sitting in jail and might be there for a while, <laughs> might, and you feel like you should just give up, you still have a purpose. God can use anything and anyone and still has a plan and purpose for your life, and he can still use you. In fact, it's people like you and I who sin that he uses the most. Our stories and the things we do and the trials we go through shape and mold our lives and he promises us that he will count it all for good and to never harm you but to give you life and purpose jeremiah twenty nine eleven. for i know the plans i have for you declares the lord plans to prosper you and not to harm you plans to give you hope and future i pray that this will give you hope even a little bit I know there are a lot of rumors going around and I choose not to believe them, but I read somewhere that you, you're you depressed and not doing good. I really can't imagine what you're going through as I've never been in your position, but I've been through some really bad depression and I can imagine it's worse not being able to talk to... Oh, where's the next page? Not being able to talk to. And it just cuts off. 
anyone. Please don't, they had them out of order. Please don't let your thoughts ruin you or torment you, especially the people in there or out here. I can imagine it would be hard not to, but focus on what God thinks of you and how much he loves you. He desires to have a relationship with you, to know your heart. He thinks you are valuable and he created you in his image. He cares for you. You are a gift. You have been justified and redeemed, no longer a slave to sin. How does she know this? Because he, she doesn't know that he's repented. You will not be condemned by God. You have been set free. <clears throat> you are accepted and made new. You are chosen by him and predestined by him to obtain an inheritance in heaven. And he will supply you with all your needs. When you feel sad or depressed, focus on those things and just remember who you are in him because that's all that matters and his opinion of you is the only one that matters so a little about me <clears throat> since you have no idea who I am I figured I would share my story and how I came to know Jesus I'm 32 years old three years ago I got into a drunk driving accident I was the one driving and I almost took and it almost took my life I woke up in the hospital and they told me they wanted to amputate my right leg because it was completely dead. I kept refusing, but they told me I would die from infection if I didn't get it amputated. Eventually, I signed consent to amputate and started praying that God would heal me. I went into the surgical room and came out six hours later and still had my leg. They were able to take a cadaver artery and, miracul and it miraculously worked. They eventually had to transfer me to a more experienced hospital where I stayed for two months and had over 20 surgeries on both of my legs in order to save them. After I was discharged from the hospital, I was bed bound for six months, then wheelchair bound for six months. It took me over a year to learn to walk again. I became very depressed, but through it all, God was true, and the doctors were astounded by how well I healed. They have no clue how I'm able, I, I am here walking today, because they told me I'd probably never be able to walk again, even though the last three years, coming up to four in February, I have some really rough times with severe chronic pain and depression, but somehow I was able to find strength through Jesus to get through the toughest times, and he has never let me down. I hope that you read this, and it gives you hope and something to fight for. I'm going to end this letter here, but I will be praying for you in the meantime. And I would love to continue writing to you if you would like to, and if you choose to write back, please put Attention Anna Nowak under the church address. And if you choose not to write, just know I have hope for you, even if you don't have any for yourself. Keep fighting. God bless, Anna. Well, it's interesting, and I feel really bad for her story and her accident, and I'm sure she mean, means well or meant well. But she's saying all these things, saying he's forgiven and all this and that, when... She should have told him that he needs to ask forgiveness first. You have to ask, repent, take Jesus as your Lord and Savior before you, any of these things are going to apply to him. She's just telling him that they already apply. I don't know. Maybe that's what that church believes. I don't know. It's the Life Church in Dupere, Wisconsin. They have a website. I think it said it's a non-denominational church but I just thought it was interesting to read that's the first letter she sent to him he obviously wrote her back and they've been corresponding he didn't respond to any of the ladies sending the bikini pictures so maybe he felt for her story and you know he's converted he he's a Christian now and he's not demon possessed anymore so you know no more demons. They're gone. 
All right, just thought I'd share this letter and hope you have a great day.